Sarah, and this is Budget Sew, where we create stylish, fashionable looks as inexpensively as possible. Today, I'm going to show you the Queen's Corgi pillow that I created, but first, I'm going to show you one of my makes. Today, I'm wearing McCall's 6355 and Quick Sew 3195. The top that I'm wearing is McCall 6355. I made the three quarter length sleeve top in view C. I purchased this pattern from Fabricland and originally made up the dress for a Spice Girl Halloween costume, Ginger Spice. The link to the video with that dress is right here at the top of the screen. This pattern includes a semi fitted top and dress that have optional front and back vertical darts self neck binding, and optional invisible zipper. This is a Palmer Pledge pattern that was published in 2011. These patterns are known for their great fit. The front of the pattern even says, fashion that fits. Palmer Pledge patterns recommend pinning the pieces together and then trying it on. I didn't do that. I made up this top in a size 16, but it was too big. So I added front and back neck darts to remove the excess fabric around the neckline. It also raised the shoulder seam so that it sat on the shoulder rather than on the arm. The next time I make up this pattern, I'll check the ease, make it in a smaller size, maybe a size 12 or 14, and pin the pattern pieces together to check the fit. That should eliminate the alterations I made. The skirt that I'm wearing is Quick Sew 3195. View B. I bought this pattern at Valley Village thrift stores. It's a pull on skirt with an elastic waist. View A and B have various shaped panels with gussets in the side seams. On view A, the grain lines are marked for being made from a striped fabric. The drawing for view B shows three different fabrics, but I used only one. View C and D are gourd skirts with 16 panels. The pattern was designed for light to medium weight woven fabrics, but I made it up in a knit. I love the drape and the movement of the skirt. I love the length and the elastic waist is so comfortable. The next time I make up this skirt, I'll try three different fabrics, just like in the picture. The fabric is a lightweight knit from Fabricland. It was on sale for $4.75 a meter, so I purchased four meters. The fabric is 100% polyester, so it's a great wash and wear fabric. Since I tried to squeeze out as much as I can from a piece of fabric, I also made up a dress, Simplicity 2648. The link to the video with that dress is right here at the top of the screen. To complete the look, I'm wearing Betsy Johnson designer high heels. I love the hot pink soles and the crystals on the tassels at the heel. I bought the shoes from Mesh Boutique, a consignment boutique just off Richmond Row in London, Ontario. These shoes were originally over $200, but I paid just 20. I bought the ostrich skin London Fog purse from Value Village Thrift Store. The earrings were a gift from a friend. The gold necklace came from the Salvation Army Charity Shop and the bangle bracelet from Value Village Thrift Store. Now onto the Queen's Corgi pillow. In honor of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and her corgis, I thought it would be fun to try out another craft
from my McCall's Needlework and Craft Annual, Volume 3, that was published in 1952, the year she became queen. I thrifted this annual from Good Value Thrift Stores for $2. While in this store, I found an additional two McCall Needlework Annuals from 1950 and 1951, as well as 22 McCall's Needlework and Craft Magazines from the 1950s through the 1970s. I hope to show you more of these treasures in future videos. Inside the McCall's Needlework and Craft Annual is a lovely needle craft called Embroider with Applique Rick Rack Braid and Tape. It says, Applique Embroidery, an age-old needle craft, is a delightfully fresh and effective medium for today. It covers large and small areas with simple and fanciful designs, is quickly done, and allows great freedom for individual expression, lending itself to all sorts of fabrics and sewing box scraps. The marine and jungle wall hangings on this page were designed by Jean Busby Fulton. They are made from washable fabrics, meaning they go in the washing machine for cleaning, and both are appliqued on a moss green background in strong hued colors. On the next page is heirloom charm for a contemporary home. Quaint provincial pictures applied onto fine cotton from scraps of calico and chintz in colors and patterns that give the feeling of the motif's counterpart in nature. Small chintz leaves for foliage, brown calico for trees, and blue tail for the peacock. My Better Homes and Gardens Creative Crafts and Stitchery book has a whole chapter dedicated to applique. I bought this book at Valley Village Thrift Stores for $1.99. The chapter on applique says, along with many other needlecraft techniques, the fine art of applique is experiencing a revival in popularity. Layer smaller cutout fabric motifs on a larger background and create fabric collages that lend themselves to many handcraft projects. Accomplish the following applique projects by hand stitching, by machine stitching, or by gluing. I use two techniques, hand stitching and machine stitching for the corgi pillow. One craft that caught my eye was the applique bedspread. A bold applique design turns an ordinary bedspread into the focal point of a bedroom. This particular motif is a contemporary adaptation of an old patchwork design. It will harmonize either with a traditional or a modern decor. Even though the applique design is oversized, its neutral tones have pleasing eye appeal and they complement the room's furnishings and accessories. Another applique craft from the Creative Crafts and Stitchery book was this brightly colored applique rug. This colorful three by four and a half foot felt rug brightens any room. It looks difficult to make, but you simply enlarge the pattern pieces, cut out the felt, and stitch the layers together. Then there's the giant applique Christmas sock. Make a stocking large enough to hold Christmas gifts for the whole family. Just cut out the design on pink felt, back with red felt, applique heart, flower, and leaf shapes on the stocking, and then hang it by the fireplace. The overall height of the stocking is about two feet, so there'll be plenty of room for lots of stocking stuffers. As an added treat, gather some fabric scraps, yarn, embroidery floss, knit fabric, and some polyester stuffing to make the dolls. For an added surprise, make a doll to represent each member of the family. Sock it to them this Christmas. My McCall's Have Fun With Felt book has wonderful applique ideas. I bought this book at Mission Thrift Stores for $1. I'll post the link to the video of my thrift haul where I purchased this book in the description box of this video. One of the ideas in this book is the Art Nouveau skirt. A long, elegant sweep of color is dramatically bordered with machine applique. Art Nouveau blooms in fabulous colors 
and intertwining leaves in two shades of green give a graceful flow to the half circle skirt, even when it's not in motion. The flower motif is repeated eight times around the skirt. On the next page is a scalloped vest. Three color applique, all scrolls and curves, pattern the front and back of a waist skimming vest. Each applique varies slightly, but color placement is the same. The matching felt skirt, a half circle, may be made with just one seam and topped with a simple cummerbund. Then there's the circle poncho. The rich navy blue of the poncho is offset by the lighter blue, black, and rose shapes, machine stitched or hand applique. Black piping edges the bottom and slashed neckline. A great look that's all set to go places with pants, skirts, and dresses. My final example of applique are these two tennis racket covers. Delightful in felt, have motifs applique by machine in satin stitch, or they may be sewn by hand. Flowers are in a basket decorated with star stitches. The bullseye is made with four circles stitched one on top of the other. Find the outer edges, then sew in a zipper on one side for a snug fit. These examples show that applique can be done on garments as well as home goods. It's a wonderful way to personalize something and make it uniquely yours. Now, let's get started. The first thing I did was measure the pillow that I was going to cover. I bought my gold pillow from the Salvation Army Charity Store in a bed in a bag package that included two small pillows, a bolster pillow, and a full-size comforter. Since I have two pillows, I made two pillow covers. The second pillow was featured in my video, McCall's Crafts, Stencil the Crown Pillow. The link to that video is at the top of the screen. You may recognize the blue fabric that I chose. It's the same fabric as my Simplicity crafting jacket. Simplicity 4183 appeared in my Fabricland fabric haul video. The link to that video is at the top of the screen. I thought that I had used all of this fabric and did not have a single remnant left, but it just appeared in my fabric trunk. What a surprise it was to discover more fabric. When I sewed the crafting jacket, I thought that I did not have enough fabric left for a belt. So I had to piece together a belt with the 10 scraps of fabric that I had left over from grading down the jacket to a smaller size. This jacket also appeared in my Vogue pattern haul video. The link to that video is at the top of the screen. The navy blue fabric was 150 centimeters wide and just over three meters long before I cut out the jacket. It's a woven polyester and I paid $4.99 for the entire piece of fabric at Value Village Thrift Store. I chose the navy blue fabric for the pillows because it matches my Union Jack blanket and pillow on my couch. I used my chalk and tape measure to measure a square on my folded fabric that measured 18 by 18 inches or 42 by 42 centimeters. One of these squares will be used for the corgi pillow cover and the other was used for the crown pillow cover. I used my 36 inch cutting ruler with handle and chalk to mark my cutting lines. My partner Brad's father gave this cutting ruler to him and I borrow it all the time. I find it very handy because of its long length, handle for easy lifting, and square edge. Then I cut out the square using my Singer 9.5 inch Pro Series Bent Sewing Scissors. These fabric shears smoothly slice my fabric. One of the best Amazon.ca purchases I have ever made. I brushed off the additional chalk from the line that I drew too long. There's not much fabric left, but I'm sure I could squeeze out another project or two. I try to use every scrap of fabric that I have. I carefully place my patterns, making best use of the fabric while ensuring the fabric pattern and nap are the same. 
I cut out two more squares of fabric measuring 18 by 18 inches for the back of the cushions. I chose this golden brown fabric because this fabric is the mate to the curtains and cushion covers that I already have in my living room. It has the same pattern, but it's a lighter gold and a complementary fabric. I bought this golden brown fabric from the clearance section at Fabricland for super cheap. I made two pillow shams, a bed coverlet, and the remaining fabric you see here are the remnants. I chose an image of a corgi from my It's So Fluffy Corgi Coloring Book. This book has two sets of 30 original illustrations and were printed single-sided to avoid bleed through. I'll post the link to the book on Amazon.ca in the description box of this video. I find coloring stress relieving and there are many adult coloring books out there, but I love corgis. So this coloring book was very me. I traced the corgi and the heart's background using remnant tissue paper left over from cutting out my sewing patterns. I saved the really big pieces for altering my patterns and tracing new projects. I traced the image of the corgi and all the other details in the picture, including the eye, nose, ear, mouth, and background hearts. This tracing will be used to cut out the body of the corgi and as a template for the placement of the interior pieces like the eye and nose. If you plan to use your picture as a template, then you only have to trace the corgi outline. I traced the complete image because I didn't want to remove the page from the coloring book. The McCall's Needlework and Crafts Annual had instructions on how to make working tracings of designs. It said, before using design printed on magazine sheets, they should be traced onto working sheets. Lay a sheet of tracing paper over the page. Use a small amount of rubber cement applied to each corner of the tracing paper only to hold it in place. Remove paper carefully. Rubber cement traces are easily rubbed away with fingertips. If rubber cement is not available, attach paper with small pieces of scotch tape or masking tape. Tapes are difficult to remove. To avoid tearing the page, cut the tape at the edges of the paper and leave the tape on the page. I held my tracing paper firmly in place over the corgi picture so that it wouldn't move. My next step was to trace the smaller details of the corgi. For example, the eye, mouth, nose, interior ear, and the white fur sections, including the feet, the bottom, and the face. Since these pieces will be cut out of a different fabric, they should be traced separately. If you have an image that is smaller than what you need, the McCall's Needlework Annual has instructions on how to enlarge a pattern by squares. It says, mark off squares over the design to be enlarged. Use an eighth of an inch squares for small designs and a quarter of an inch, half an inch, one inch, and larger squares for proportionately larger designs. Make the same number of squares similarly placed in the space to be occupied by the enlarged design. Copy outline of design from the smaller square areas to larger corresponding square areas. After all the pieces had been traced, my next step was to cut them out of felt. 
First, I cut out the eye and nose out of black felt. I bought my felt in a package of 45 sheets, approximately 6 by 6 inches, for $3 at Dollarama, a Canadian dollar store. There were five sheets of each of the nine colors, including yellow, red, pink, blue, white, black, light green, dark green, and orange. You may remember this felt from my How to Add a Felt Applique video, where I added three felt hearts to a sweater. The link to that video is in the description box below. Next, I chose pink felt for the interior ear and mouth of the corgi. You can choose any color you like for your applique, but I chose to make mine as close as possible to the actual colors of the Queen's corgis. Queen Elizabeth II has had corgis since she was a child, and Buckingham Palace sells stuffed, cuddly corgis in their online gift shop. The description on the website said, It is widely known that Queen Elizabeth II is fond of corgis and has owned more than 30 since 1945. As a tribute to the beloved Buckingham Palace pet, we've created this cuddly dog with medallion collar that's sure to take pride of place in your home too. It's so cute. It would take pride of place in my home. It would sit beside me on the budget so couch. I'll post the link to the Cuddly Corgi and the Buckingham Palace gift shop in the description box of this video. I chose white felt for the feet, face, and bottom of the corgi, and red felt for the background hearts that surround the dog. You don't have to add a background to your corgi or your applique. It can be one image. I chose to add the red hearts because they go well with the red of St. George's Cross on my Union Jack blanket and pillow. I'm not sure when I started liking corgis, but now I follow a group on Facebook called Disapproving Corgis. These corgis give such comical looks of judgment and disapproval, including their famous side eye. I love the expressions they make. It's like their thoughts show right across their faces. Their pointed ears and stumpy legs always make me smile. Maybe one day in the future, I'll get one of these funny, adorable loafs. Before I continue on with the Queen's Corgi pillow, please like and share this video with your friends and family. I would love to help others sew and upcycle on a budget and troubleshoot their favorite patterns. I also love sharing the treasures that I find at thrift stores. If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe and make sure that the bell is on so you receive a notification when I release a new video. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Now let's get back to the corgi pillow. My next step was to pin my corgi body template to the fabric and then cut it out. I chose the same fabric as the back of the pillow for a couple of reasons. The first reason was it went really well with the navy blue fabric I chose and it matched the back of the pillow. The second reason was that the swirling pattern of the fabric gave the corgi a bit of depth and looked a bit like highlights in their fur.
Once the pattern was pinned in place, I cut it out. I didn't use my fabric scissors to cut out my corgi because I didn't want to dull the shears by cutting through the tissue template. Instead, I used my multi-purpose scissors that I bought in a package of three from Dollarama. They were less than $4, so very good value for my money. I buy quite a few sewing supplies at the dollar store. I bought scissors, thread, bobbins, pins, ribbon, tape measures, buttons, and even sewing machine needles. All the products have worked out nicely. I've also bought craft supplies for my other hobbies, including yarn, felt, embroidery floss, paints, paint brushes, and scrapbooking materials. I've spent a lot of time in the craft aisle, looking through the products and imagining what I can make. As I cut out the corgi from the fabric, I made the lines as clean as possible. I didn't want any long threads of fabric hanging off or sticking up through the edges as I sewed it to the pillow. If the fabric you used frayed a lot, then consider using fray block before sewing down your applique. I have a tube of fray block that I use every so often. This product prevents fraying of fabrics and ribbon, dries quickly, clear, soft and flexible, and is washable and dry cleanable. Its precision tip ensures that you only use fray block where you need it. My next step was to position my corgi applique onto the pillow. I centered the fabric corgi onto the navy blue fabric and then pinned it down. The outline of the corgi will be stitched in place. I used a satin stitch on my sewing machine to outline and cover the raw edge of my corgi applique. I chose Guterman thread number 554 Cinnamon that perfectly complemented the golden brown fabric of the corgi. It was not a match to the fabric because I wanted the outline to show. The satin stitch took quite a bit of thread, so I had a backup spool just in case. I didn't buy this thread for this project. These spools were left over from another sewing adventure. My sewing machine manual had instructions on appliquing. It said, select an applique design to be applied to your garment and baste it in place. Satin stitch around the raw edge of the applique, completely covering the edge. You may want to do this with a contrasting color of thread or the same color. My sewing machine manual also had a section on satin stitching. It showed all the settings that needed to be set, including the special stitch dial, special stitch variegator, stitch width control, and stitch length control. It also recommended using a satin stitch presser foot. The manual said, closely spaced zigzag stitches are called satin stitches. This is an attractive stitch for appliquing, monogramming, and buttonhole making. Whenever you are using this stitch, it is well to remember to loosen the tension of the top thread slightly. The wider the stitch you make, the looser the tension should be. It 
it continued, if you are stitching on a very soft fabric, it is well to use a backing of tissue paper or interfacing for a well-formed stitch. Puckering of the material will be eliminated and the bobbin thread will not be visible on the right side of the fabric. As with all special stitches, it is best to make a sample design on your fabric before starting the design on the garment. I didn't have the original sewing machine manual that came with my vintage Kenmore sewing machine, so I learned as best as I could to use this machine. About a year ago, my dad found a copy of the manual online. He was searching for it because my mom bought the exact same model of sewing machine as me at a yard sale in Clinton, Ontario. She couldn't pass up the metal beauty. I'll post the link to the manual for the Kenmore model 1230, 1240, and 1250 zigzag sewing machine in the description box of this video. My next step was to hand stitch the felt pieces to the fabric corgi body. Once I had positioned the black felt circle for the eye, I threaded a needle and knotted off the end. I poked my needle up through the back of the felt eye, about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Now the knot was between the felt eye and the fabric body and not visible. Next, I poked the needle through both the fabric body and the back of the felt eye, about an eighth of an inch from the first stitch, as well as an eighth of an inch from the edge of the eye. I made sure that the stitch that went through the fabric corgi body was as small as possible and slightly under the edge of the felt eye so that there were no long threads outlining the eye. I continued this stitch, the whip stitch, all the way around the felt sections to secure them to the corgi. I chose to hand stitch the felt pieces in place for a couple of reasons. The first being that most of the felt pieces were quite small and the heavy satin stitch of the sewing machine might overwhelm them. And the second reason was that I have more control over where I stitch by hand than I do with my sewing machine. Hand sewing took longer than machine stitching, but I prefer the look of the whip stitch for these pieces. Then I whip stitch the white section of the corgi face to the corgi body. The first edition of my McCall Needlework Annual had craft called Cut and Tack. You may remember this annual from one of my videos. The link to the McCall Needlework Annual is in the description box of this video. The attractive designs in cut and tack were made from old felt hats and other odd pieces of felt and dressmaking scraps. The instruction said, each motif is to be cut out individually with sharp scissors. For the small round pieces, use a paper punch. Now that's a great idea. Larger flowers, such as violets and leaves, may be sewed to position invisibly with a matching sewing silk. The small flowers and leaves may be held in place with small stitches in matching or contrasting thread. These small applique projects make wonderful gifts. Once I had whip stitched all the way around the corgi face, I used my white thread to whip stitch the feet, bottom, and the pupil of the eye. I used pink thread to applique the inner ear and mouth of the corgi, and red thread for the seven hearts in the background. To sew the pillow cover front to the back, 
I used a brand new vintage Lightning Zephyr 12 to 14 inch black invisible zipper that I bought at Good Value Thrift Store for 25 cents. This zipper and five other vintage invisible zippers were still in their original packages. I bought four black, one white, and one bright purple zipper. The package advertised that these zippers are flexible with a nylon coil. They're lightweight yet as strong as metal. They launder an iron-like nylon and have a memory lock slider. My favorite advertising point is that they're magically self-healing. The instructions on the zipper package are fantastic. They said, turn fabric right side up. Open zipper. Place face side down with left tape on right seam allowance. Coil along seam line. Zipper tape toward cut edge of fabric. Place stop three quarters of an inch from top of fabric to allow for five eighths of an inch seam allowance. The instructions did not say I had to do this, but I pinned then hand basted the zipper in place. I find that if I don't baste it in place, it ends up going in incorrectly and I have to unpick my work and re-sew it. Maybe I need more practice sewing zippers in place. I used black Coates and Clark all-purpose dual duty plus thread to base the zipper in place. I chose black thread to match the zipper just in case I machine sewed over my basting thread and couldn't unpick it. I usually use a bright colored basting thread so I remember to remove it, but this time I chose the black thread to match. I liked that the zipper package showed for larger illustrated instructions plus further tips on successfully applying the Lightning Nylon Invisible Fastener, write to Lightning Educational Service at 50 Niagara Street in St. Catharines, Ontario. Another nice thing about the zipper package was that it has laundering and ironing instructions. It said, for iron temperatures higher than steam settings, protect coils with press cloth. Lightning Zephyr is unaffected by normal laundering and dry cleaning. The color will not chip, wear, or wash off. The nylon fastener should be closed when laundered, dry cleaned, or ironed, or when being put through a wringer. Should zipper become hard running after washing or dry cleaning, lubricate coils with beeswax, soap, or commercial Zipper Ease product. Then I hand basted the invisible zipper to the back of the pillow cover. The instructions were, straighten right zipper tape and place face side down on left seam allowance. Fabric right side up, top tape ends aligned. At the sewing machine, I sewed the invisible zipper in place. The instruction said, lower foot, turning top stop and coil upright in groove with finger. Stitch slowly until foot touches slider. Back stitch carefully. I used my invisible zipper foot. The package for the zipper said to ensure safe and satisfactory results, use this special lightning foot attachment, which can be adjusted properly for stitching in the Lightning Nylon Invisible Zipper. The instructions continued, straighten right zipper tape and place face side down on left seam allowance, fabric right side up, top tape ends aligned. On stretchy fabrics, pin end of zipper for extra stability. 
position foot over tape, top stop and coil upright in other groove. Stitch as in step A. Stitching must not catch any part of turned up tape and coil. If it has, remove these stitches and carefully restitch. Straighten out the zipper and fabric right side up. Finger press fabric away from the coil. Carefully close the zipper. If the zipper tape shows in seam with normal tension, adjust the foot so the needle is close to the coil and restitch. No need to remove the initial stitches. I did it! My zipper slides open and closed smoothly. I was thrilled! Then I sewed the rest of the seam below the zipper. The instruction said, to join seam below zipper, slide foot to the left of the needle. If your foot is of the two needle hole type, snap off the slipper part. Lower the needle into the fabric three to four stitches above the end of previous stitching and as close as possible alongside it. Make sure the needle does not catch in the end of the zipper tape. Lower the foot and by hand operating machine, carefully stitch remaining seam closed using power after the first inch of stitching. My next step was to pin the pillow covers remaining seams closed. I placed my fabric squares right sides together, lined up the edges as best as possible, and pinned all the way around the three open sides. I really enjoyed this craft. I was really pleased that I made a mate to my stenciled crown pillow using a different crafting technique. Another thing that made me smile about this project was that I still have some of the golden brown fabric left over for another project. I wonder what I'll make next. I'll be sure to show you here on Budget Sew. Once the seams were pinned, they should be sewn in place. Then I sewed the three remaining seams. I started at one end of the zipper and sewed around to the other end of the zipper, pivoting at the corners. Before sewing the sides, remember to open the zipper. Otherwise, you won't be able to turn the pillow the right side out. Yes, I made that mistake before and had to unpick part of the side seam to unzip the zipper. Once it was opened, I re-sewed the unpicked part of the seam. After the seams had been sewn, I clipped the corners and trimmed the seam allowances. My next step was to press the seam allowances open. After that, I turned the pillow the right side out and inserted my gold square pillow that I purchased from the Salvation Army Charity Store. Here is the finished pillow.
I hope you enjoyed the Queen's Corgi pillow. Please like and share this video with your friends and family. If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe. And if you'd like to stay up to date with Budget Sew, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Thanks for watching. See you next time.